Well, I talk about wine. Changing water into wine. Well, that's an old trick. That's been done before. But what about taking white wine and changing it into red wine? Why don't we give that a shot? So I got my red wine here, my white wine, and let's just see what we can do with it and see whether or not we can change it into red wine. There we go. Well, obviously it isn't really wine. Uh, this is a, an old chemistry trick that, that we do in our chemistry magic shows, as we call them. We have a little bit of uh, potassium thiocyanate at the bottom of the glass. In the other glass, we have a little bit of uh, ferric compound, ferric sulfate. These two form a complex, which is sort of a, a red color. It's a neat little reaction, and actually has some, uh, some utility, because we do use this reaction to detect whether or not iron is present in an unknown sample. Turns red, it is. But uh, red wine, that's a different story. That, of course, is not done with this kind of color. The red color comes from the skin of, of the grapes. And I'll be honest with you, I'm no enophile. I'm no great lover of, of wine, except for its chemistry. I really do enjoy that. And boy, is it interesting and, and, and complex. You know, you take a bottle of wine like this, you know how many different chemicals are in there? Over a thousand, believe it or not, They've been isolated. Many of them have been categorized. And this, of course, is, is made by nature. It's uh, one of the oldest chemical reactions. The only one that predates it is, is our conquest of fire. But uh, the process of fermentation is, is very, very old, thousands of years old. Uh, in fact, uh, it's even older than the other uh, ancient chemical process, which is soap making, because man's desire to be drunk is older than his desire to be clean. Anyway, it's really interesting chemistry, and I made some synthetic red wine here, but what about making real synthetic red wine? There's a California enterprise that has actually tried that. They've isolated about 60 compounds from red wine, and those are responsible for almost all of the flavor and, and the aroma. And they blended them together to see whether or not they could come up with something that really tastes like wine without having to go through all of the growing of the grapes and all of the fermentation. And uh, depending on, on who you ask to taste it, you get different uh, reactions. Some people say it tastes just like wine. Others say it tastes like an old plastic bag. I don't know how many people have actually tasted old plastic bags. But it is really interesting that by just blending together about 60 different compounds in the right concentrations, you can actually mimic the flavor of wine. Of course, wine lovers will never buy, buy into that. I'm no wine lover. To tell you the truth, I can't tell the difference between two buck chuck and the most expensive of wine. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I actually like unfermented wine better. We, of course, call it uh, grape juice. And that has many, many compounds in there as well. There, there are hundreds and hundreds of compounds in, in the grape juice. But of course, when you add the yeast and you do the fermentation, you get a whole variety of other compounds, including one called resveratrol, which is supposed to be good for us. But uh, I've never gotten used to the taste of wine. I, I wish I could enjoy it more, but I do enjoy talking about its chemistry. But I'll be very honest with you. I enjoy the chemistry of uh, the taste of grape juice more than the taste of wine. So uh, happy new year to everyone out there. Enjoy the wine and enjoy the chemistry.